Welcome to Showbiz Unfiltered. I'm Ryan Mark, and you may know me from shows like The Apprentice and most definitely Celebs Go Dating. And I'm showbiz journalist Amanda Devlin. Join us as we talk about the hottest headlines and opinions that pack a punch. Everything from reality TV to the royalty. This is a podcast that doesn't beat around the bush when it comes to showbiz. No fluff, no waffle, no snooze fest. This is what you need to be listening to. This is Showbiz Unfiltered. But I think we should probably kick off with The Apprentice, considering that I'm here on this podcast. Yeah, you know a little bit about it, don't you? Just a little bit about it. And it's coming back on Thursday Mm -hmm. next week. And I'm, I was going to say I'm really excited, but I'm not, actually. You're not? Why? I think since my series, and I'm not biased, in 2019, Series 15, it's gone downhill. The casting has become so conservative. You can even see in this cast, two doctors, two pie company owners, boring, boring, boring. That I, that confused me. Why two pie company owners? Out of all of the businesses, yeah. um, the trades, everything they want to show off about, us in Britain and yet they've just gone for pies are we that obsessed with them I don't know what it is and I also think there's so many similarities now to Mm. the Love Island cast all of the girls are in bikinis all of the guys are shirtless on their Instagram displaying their six packs I just don't think you can tell the difference Mm -hmm. anymore between Love Island and The Apprentice and that was its (laughs) that's that was its USP big personalities but business personalities but now I think they're just wanting to be reality famous but we don't i mean it's nice to have people that are attractive to look at on tv yeah, isn't it i mean we don't, you don't watch the apprentice for that though but uh, can't you have it all Ryan? No, you can't. can't you be gorgeous attractive um sexy wear a bikini get your eyelashes done and also run a business be really smart you know, no. why, why can't you be? Both? No, there's a clear, no, there's a clear <laughs> distinction. You have Love Island, hot, gorgeous, tens out of ten, but they're dumb. And then you have The Apprentice, <laughs> mid, kind of, you know, iffy looking, but they're smart. And I think that's what makes The Apprentice so unique. I think merging the two just makes it so confusing for me. But what's interesting, I think the BBC have been really safe with the casting. They don't want any chaos. I've noticed my series youngest i'm still the youngest ever candidate to do the show since no 2005 way. okay they haven't had anyone younger than me and i think because my series was so chaotic you can even see now with new candidates they're all really old you know they're all in their 30s i mean we're talking like <laughs> <laughs> we're talking like we're gonna generation. fall out on the first topic i mean come on if you're gonna have a, a, be on a show like that and have a credible business plan because that's what mm. it's all about you win what two hundred fifty thousand pounds mm. and it's all about having this credible business that we you are going to try and make successful with lord sugar if you're just you know you're an exception to the rule i totally get that but if you're you know really young you haven't had that life experience you haven't been out there in the business world what, what are you going to bring to lord sugar you know it needs to yeah. be tit for tat and um I, yeah i just i think the fact that they're people who are as old as in their 30s then it needs to be someone like yeah but for, for a range a bit more of a bit of variety yeah, but yeah i variety just think it's a spice of life look they just need to be reminded that it's a tv show yes it needs to have the intellect and it needs to have those business elements but it is also a show that needs ratings to get commissioned every year mm. so they need to get candidates with big personalities to drive the format and also there's been but one there might be big personalities no. we haven't seen it yet. have you seen them yeah but just on first impressions don't judge a book by its cover it there i've might looked at all of their huge... instagrams dull is a word i would use <laughs> <laughs> i've seen all of the instagrams not for me mm, well i mean it will be interesting to see if it is actually a completely different vibe this year mm. um or you're just being extremely judgmental maybe i'm jealous maybe i want to go back i think you're jealous show. i think that's it where's the apprentice will start that's my question oh <gasps> that would be so great who would you it? have on it um obviously you tom skinner um <laughs> that's, it. that's it i think no one else is really louise zisman I love Louisa Zisman, yeah. Katie Hopkins. Oh my God, that would be chaos. That would be chaos. But brilliant TV. James Hill, he won Celebrity Big Brother once. Andrew Brady. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I don't know. I don't, well, that's I the thing about The Apprentice. It. It's not typically on there to get famous. Yeah. It's, I think it's become more like that in recent years. Yeah. And, you know, you can see there's there's a few girls from the last series who were kind of all, I don't know, it, was, it felt that influencer kind of, situation where they're coming off and they're trying to get brand deals and yeah. and you think it, it is trying to find the line between being taken really seriously it is a serious business show mm. or you're going to act like a love islander but actually what i wanted to mention was the fact that uh, karen brady she's actually really up for this whole glam thing and in fact her glam squad she's brought in love island makeup artists no way really yeah because she wants to, to say what I was saying b at the beginning, she wants to show that you can be beautiful, you can have all your makeup done, look sensational, you know, wear what you want, but still be taken seriously in the boardroom. Mm. Well, I don't know. I don't really like Karen. I just remember filming with her <laughs> and <laughs> she was just the ice queen. You know, that witch from Narnia that rides on in the, yes. rides in the carriage with that little goblin. Yeah. She just reminds me of the Ice Witch from Narnia. She's got a huge diamond ring. She's so glamorous. She looks stunning, but yeah. she wouldn't talk to us. However, Claude was the best. I love Claude. Oh, I really wish yeah. that he was on it, but I do actually love Tim Campbell as well. I've um, interviewed him before mm. and uh, he he's just such a nice guy. And I thought you can't, you, can, you know, he comes across quite scary on the show, but yeah. actually maybe it is a bit of an act. The Apprentice is synonymous with Lord Sugar. Mm -hmm. And I think once he leaves, look, he's after a BAFTA. He loves fame. I think he's pretty narcissistic. I think that's what I've g gathered. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't need the money. He's worth like five billion pounds. But I think he just loves the whole showbiz world. Mm -hmm. And he likes being a part of it. But I think once he leaves, you're going to have replacing maybe Peter Jones from Dragon's Den or Stephen Bartlett. But I don't think they would offer the same pizzazz and star factor that mm. Lord Sugar commands. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, I love his jokes. They're sort of like proper dad jokes. Um, yeah. But I've heard that he has to like have them written down. So they, they're in front of him and he's basically just sort of reading them out. Well, it's um, someone like, else has written them and, you know. I don't know if, I think they're his jokes. I think he's actually, it's like his style of humour. But mm. it's kind of like, so, pause, look down as well. <laughs> no, but, Sergio, and then we all laugh hysterically. Like it's the <laughs> it's the funniest thing we've ever heard in our in our lives because we're so terrified so he's going to fire us if we don't laugh. But yeah. yeah, it's quite funny. But I have a bone to pick with him actually because he did an interview with the Daily Mail recently, and he was saying that my generation, Gen Z, are adverse to work, and we're just TikTokers. And I just think that is so unfair. And he just thinks that we are lazy. But I don't think that's representative of my generation. I think we work hard, but in different ways. And has he forgotten about you? Yeah, he said, and also he said that he's learned nothing from the candidates, just excuses. Ooh, and I, I, took, I really took that personally. Yeah. So we had good chats about Harrods in the boardroom. <laughs> I was telling <laughs> him all place. about the department store and champagne. So do you not see um, like a friendship that no, it didn't blossom between you guys? You don't, you never sort of stayed in touch and texting and We did on Twitter. I tried to help him get a Rolex. So I was, <laughs> I was going, well, I have contacts at Harrods because I worked there before The Apprentice. So I was kind of going back and forth with him and I didn't, I wasn't able to get the watch for him. So maybe that's why he hasn't messaged me. But, he hates um, you. No, he hates me. But yeah, on Twitter, yeah, he followed a few of us from my series and he only followed like four, Thomas Skinner, me and the winner and someone else, I think. So, oh, wow, that's a really good aspect. It's quite, it's I know, I know, that's going on my CV. But um, <laughs> yeah, so he's quite selective. So I was able to get a hold of him, but yeah, I don't really speak to him now. He, I think he just moves on. I mean, there's so many candidates that mm. he gets to see. Mm. I just don't think he has the time to pay attention to everything actually when i did a debate on good morning britain he actually tweeted and said well done ryan mark oh, wow. so he has supported me now and again and he loves good morning britain oh fab. he watches yes. it religiously apparently so yeah Ooh. and his wife follows me and all right show off. I'm, that's all i'm gonna say. anyway should we yeah. move on to the next topic because this was hitting the headlines this week it's eamon holmes who we know from you know this morning um he's married to ruth langsford mm. massive big ITV names. Um, he is someone who is always like quite honest. I, I feel like when you watch him, he it feels like a conversation and, you know, he's just chatting and he's very laid back, his kind of style of presenting, which I love. So he's been whacked with this huge bill 
<laughs> what are you laughing bit, at? What are you laughing at? I think I'm going to say something else, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and he is, uh, he, I mean, he went out, tried to go through the, the courts and fight it and everything. But, and he's ended up. <laughs> So I don't I don't actually have sympathy for him, by the way. I mean he's I'm guessing a multimillionaire. He must be on a fortunate GB News, but But two hundred and fifty thousand pounds is a huge amount of, of money that you, mm. you he believes that he shouldn't have paid. Coming out physically with him, he got shingles, which I haven't had, but it doesn't look great and mm. it sounds really nasty. And Walking it just sick shows as well, you right? was that related? He, back problems is kind of always struggled mm, with i think mm, he had like hip replacements right, he's yeah, been yeah. through such a horrible time recently but still trying you know still doing his job and mm. you remember about the whole this morning thing he was axed from that um he's been through such a tough time and he he for him selling his beloved home back where he's from in belfast yeah um but it's been one of those stories that everyone has been intrigued about because you know, like you said, some some people don't feel sorry for him because you think he's got loads of money. Yeah, um, which he does. I mean, he must be on the fortune, like I said, at GB News. And I always find that these celebrities, Gary Lineker, Lorraine Kelly, they find a way. There's so many tax loopholes. The Jimmy Lorraine Carr, Kelly thing that was... Do you remember her? So she mm. she actually got out of it yeah, no, because she saying. claimed that she had um, she was playing a character. It wasn't her. Yeah. So then it made the taxes slightly different, and she was she managed to dodge this huge bill. Whereas for Eamon, he hasn't been able to. Right. Um, and there are so many caveats. Like you, these celebrities can afford expensive accountants, and there's so many ways to dodge tax. So yeah, when it comes to these stories, I'm just like, yeah, you know, it is what it is. I couldn't have a scrap of sympathy for Eamon Holmes. But I have met him and uh, I think oh, he's really nice. He's a lovely, I met him on GB man. News, yeah. And he was always very sweet. Um, so we've got also coming up about Katie Price. Um, mm, her daughter, who's always, Princess Andre. Yeah. So Princess Andre is, she's a bit of an influencer now. She's, um, through her mum's, mum and dad's fame, of course, she's Peter Andre's daughter too. Um, she's become a bit of a hit online because of her fashion sense. So she got snapped up by Pretty Little Thing, wasn't it? Yeah, Pretty Little um, Thing. So she's been modelling for them and she's a stunning girl, isn't she? The question is though, if Princess wasn't the daughter of famous parents like Katie Price and mm. Peter Andre, would she be given this big money deal? Would she be a millionaire by 18? It kind of brings up the the, the sort of this debate the about nepotism. nepotism debate. Yeah, for sure. Because you've got at the moment, we've got there's got quite a lot of high profile uh, celebrity children who are starting to benefit from their parents' success. How and do it, you feel about that? And it infuriates me so much. Yeah, I, and yeah. it's similar to the Molly May line that she peddles, where she never really says that Love Island is the reason why she's so successful, and she was already an influencer, and that and that was her natural trajectory. So what I was just her find, thing about the, the twenty four hours. We've all got the same. 24 yeah, we all have the same twenty four hours. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I just find it really insufferable when these children don't really attest the success and the wealth that they might amass to their parents' fame and the hard work that they put in. Peter Andre worked hard as a pop singer and then Katie Price was a model. Mm -hmm. So the reason why their children are successful is because they're trading off their parents' names. I know, but then if you had the opportunity, wouldn't you go for it? Because you've got, there are so many opportunities from them. They're kind of in the spotlight yeah. before they've achieved anything. Yeah. And they from can birth. meet the right people. Yeah. They have the money to maybe invest in a business and start something up. But there just seems to be a lot of them out there now. So you've got Bradley Walsh and his son. Which I can't stand because I don't think he's a good presenter. And I think Obviously, Bradley Walsh is a great ITV talent, but I think his son adds no value to the show. Although he is now acting. He's in different ITV dramas. Which ones? Um, something about... But that's what I mean, not even memorable. That's true. No, but I think, yeah, well, okay. Yeah, it wasn't for me, but maybe it's something that he's like a kind of... Um, someone out there. Well, for the kind of <laughs> older, you know, audiences, he's kind mm. of, he's, that's what he... He suits. It's, he's he's squeaky clean and well. Look, they have their travel. You can imagine show grandmothers well. loving him. You know. Yeah, I guess he's got that kind of cuddly aesthetic. And Bradley Walsh and what's his son's name? Barney. Barney. They have their travel log show. And look, he's profiteering from his dad's fame and success. But if he didn't have, you can't blame him. If he didn't have a great personality, or didn't have the looks or charisma, whatever it is, then he wouldn't 
be allowed to go on and it, it wouldn't it wouldn't work people wouldn't watch it so he's the, the issue that i think everyone has is that they get this chance that no one else gets but if they are boring ugly yeah. <laughs> no, no personality yeah. then they they don't get those opportunities i yeah, don't care where are. they look at brooklyn from. beckham I mean, he's maybe not ugly, but no personality. And I swear he's had like a hundred jobs. Mm. He's been a cook one day and the next day he's a skater. And, the, the you know, on Tuesday, he's a photographer <laughs> taking wildlife pictures. I mean, I just feel like they have nothing really to do. Mm -hmm. They've got so much money. Someone like Brooklyn Beckham. Imagine being in the family of the Beckhams, millions of pounds. You can have anything you like so I think they kind of struggle to find a place in the world and I guess there's also that accusation that oh you've done this you've achieved this and it might actually be off their own back but they're all people are just naturally going to assume that it's because of Victoria or David mm -hmm. so and that must be really frustrating for them if they them, do yeah. work very hard yeah. to do what they're doing but because they got that foot up that step up in life yeah everyone disregards their achievements yeah. in, in a way I feel like the Hollywood actors and actresses, they don't really get as much stick and they can go on to win Golden Globes and Oscars, but it's really the kind of reality children or mm. wag children or footballers children mm -hmm. that kind of get a lot of the flag. So yeah, I do feel sorry for them in a way. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to be in their position. Yes, I'd love to have the money, but I like working for my own success, mm -hmm. you know, through my own hard work. And I just feel like a lot of the reality children, even Bobby Brazier, he's done incredibly well. What do you think? He of him? was on Strictly. Yeah. He, uh, where did he come? He was in the final, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, and he's in the live tour now. He's on the live tour. And the live tour, it's one of my favorite events of the year. Love going to the Strictly live tour, bring my mum. We mm. just have a, such a good night out. You get to see all of your favorites on there. Um, and he will be there. And there's, there's rumours at the moment, I don't know if you've seen about him and one of his co-stars, Ellie Leach. She's the Coronation Street actress. And they are both kind won. of a similar, she won, they're both a similar uh, age. Perhaps that's why they kind of gravitated towards each other. That sounds very Love Island-y. Um, yeah. But they, they have been seen holding hands. Uh, there's rumours of potential romance there. Uh, oh yeah. So it, maybe it's because, you know, with dancing, everyone ends up, going out with each other because mm. you're just in such an intimate well, it's so tactile, you think that they've kind it? of yeah you, they're just in that, bu that, that strictly bubble that they've yeah. been in yeah, yeah they now sort of just find themselves but i'm so happy if that is the case because they just seem such lovely people it seems like a natural fit like they're yeah. both attractive you really like bobby oh, love bobby. you really like no, bobby. you really <laughs> like bobby <laughs> well we saw him briefly at the <laughs> national television awards we did last yeah year. we bumped into him at the after party but yeah. uh, we didn't i think really... we bumped into him and kind of held the stare a little bit too long yeah um, who, me or you? I think you. Definitely. I think definitely. Definitely. You. I think definitely. definitely Amanda. But um, I was very drunk. I had so much white wine. You did. It's yeah. Just, it's just free flowing, isn't it? it? Is, it's like on it's, tap. We have to talk about that maybe on a future episode of like the behind the scenes that we get to do with our jobs because going into those kind of insider parties mm. and getting to see them, all the celebrities a bit relaxed and just enjoying themselves. And it's, I'm fascinated by it. I just staring. It's like being, it's like a David Attenborough moment. You're just like watching them all. Yeah, in their you kind of need habitat. someone to narrate it, don't you? <laughs> yeah. But you do, you're so right. You definitely see a different side of the celebrities that they present on television or social media. So it's a kind of real glimpse i mean i think there was even a, a bit of a fight between two love islanders or a heated conversation that we saw at the bar there as was, well yeah so yeah we saw we saw everything yeah absolutely but it's always exciting and talking of exciting stephen bear has been released from prison that's a good segue isn't it all all what we wanted to hear yeah. stephen bear is out of prison no we are i can't believe that he only served 11 months of his 21 month sentence i mean what's yeah, the point of really i always sentence. yeah but what's the what's been she georgia harrison which is it was his ex-girlfriend that he were, had was found guilty of releasing a porn revenge uh, porn. revenge yeah it was revenge porn she went through absolute hell yeah and 11 months later he's out and one of the first it's a things kick it, in the face to her isn't it and other totally. victims of the same crime absolutely because why should someone who's violated their partner someone that they trusted yeah. in that way yeah. to profiteer from it yeah exactly um, and 
yeah, it's absolutely shameful. Well, he's just a gross human being. I actually feel shame now that I beat him in the worst score on celeb sky dating history because of course he did celeb sky dating and yes, before me he had the worst score and I trumped him so that's something I'm not really what score what did you mean anymore well the dates on celeb sky dating we'd all get a score out of 10 oh so you were the worst racist yes yeah, so you were I, worse than Stephen Bear I know and I was do not tell I people can't tell this. anyone that anymore because gosh I just don't want to be associated <laughs> with that kind of ogre like Shrek creature mm -hmm. and he's even now saying to fans that he's living in a moldy bedroom he's skint he looks mm. shaggy he doesn't he's look great beard. does he I yeah. thought he was because sometimes um <laughs> I was gonna say like a glam transformation or something you know from prison but they do they have time to work Is that out a thing? And, a glam transformation? well you know like come out and they're just like, like they're beefy and they've got like yeah. six pack and muscles whereas he's just come out and yeah just not he's not looking his best yeah um so much so that he's kind of looking for these beauty products mm. to try and enhance his look and just days after coming out of prison he's in getting botox done and he's talking about getting a hair transplant gosh you know and it just it beggars belief because there he is you know he's he's done something wrong okay now he has apparently paid for that crime but i don't know it's just the way he's come back on and gone straight onto you know his followers and yeah. there are people who still are fans of him it's kind of like i feel his fan base is probably very similar to andrew tate and i feel like there's a certain yes. section of society that these men appeal to mm -hmm. and it's that very masculine heterosexual energy really i don't know <laughs> you like know this, a lot about that I mean, don't you uh, it is you can so like it. for me I can't, it's just repulsive and, oh yeah for sure yeah i just i just don't i just don't get it but i guess he's now trying to find a way to make money because there's no real way for him to monetize anything he can't really monetize of social media because well, he would have TV, lost popularity his tv, TV. career is over and that's that's what he did. He's kind of blacklisted from the entertainment industry, at least in the UK. Yes. So, and their hope for forever, but we'll have to wait and see. Meanwhile, his ex-girlfriend, Georgia Harrison, mm. who ended up going into parliament, um, she was working on a bill because of what happened with reven the revenge porn. She really turned such an awful situation into this achievement for herself, you know, and for other girls, she's, she's helped so many more people. Um, and now she's in Love Island All Stars. So I yes. think she deserved that holiday to South Africa. She's just not having well the deserved. best time in there. Right. She had her ex, jo another ex, Joshua Ritchie come in, another bad boy, not as bad as Stephen Bear, <laughs> I should say for legal uh, reasons. Tough um, but it, she, that didn't work out. Mm. She's been smooching Anton, getting the ick. She, her luck has not been on her side for, for love in the Love Island Villa. I mean, I don't know how you can watch that show. I can't get through an episode. How very dare you. I can't get through an episode of Love Island All Stars. I don't see any stars in Love Island All Stars. I mean, they're legends within their series and fans. They're going in with huge, huge followings. But none of Hundreds them have that of thousands star of people. Factor, you know, the X factor, that kind of star quality. I'm about sorry, them. but you've had Chris Taylor, who's been in Barbie. You've had Georgia Harrison rocking it with everything that she's been doing recently. Georgia Steele, <laughs> she's a big model, and you know, she she's just incredible, isn't she? Yeah, but where's um, Chloe Burrows? Where's Molly May? Where's Tommy Fury? Where's Maura Higgins? So what you want Molly and Tommy to split up well, just so they can last, go on to the show. Well, well Yes, know. of course they are their soulmates and they met on that show, which proves that it works. Well, I think that's an even greater reason to go back on to test that love test to see it. if it actually is real love. Because the thing that's is That's a different kind of show, I think, because that would I'm be sure channel four yeah. commission, something like that. <laughs> but I think it's really just missing for me anyway. When I was watching an episode, I sat down, I got a bag of Doritos. And I was really kind of getting into the <laughs> groove of Love Island. Doritos or something? <laughs> not sponsored by Doritos, not yet. But I just couldn't get into it. I was really like wanting yes, to I get think, into honestly, it. Honestly, like, you're you guys... in the minority because the the amount. Um, well, what they're, are the they're ratings? They're huge. Right. It's str they're, they're streams. It's been like the most uh, streamed show of the of of the. I was going to say the year, but we're only in January. But it's really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that says everything. <laughs> But it's doing Best really no, month. it is doing really well online for right. sure. Um and with their people audience. Are talking about it. People, people are, are talking about, about it. it. And because it come I think I think the difference and, and you are really in the minority because a lot of people have said that they got into it so much more than previous series. Right. Because we already know everyone and you're invested. I think it's incredibly 
disingenuous. It shouldn't be called Love Island All Stars. It should be Reality Island All Stars. None of those people on the show are really looking for love. Let's be honest. Let, I mean, come on. Maybe, maybe a few. I, I can't. I can't say that everyone um, isn't. But unhappy with this because, of course, they are. They're going on there. In the hopes of fun. They're all single. They know how the game they works. All... It's all media trained. I think even Maya Jammer admitted that. They are just fully aware of how to play the game, how to get airtime. Do you not remember but Nigel Farage said last year time? on I'm a Celeb and he said, if you don't get the task, you get, I don't know, like a quarter, 25% yeah, less airtime yeah. or something yeah. like that. And I just thought like all of these people are very smart. They've done other TV shows mm -hmm. outside of Love Island. They know how it works. They know they but want to get more followers. Problem? They want to get more. Well, because the show is inherently not about love then. But, but then it ends up being, it's, I, I will agree with you. There is so much more produced this time around because they know what they're doing. They are professionals. They're going in there. They know the kind of character that worked for them last time. Yeah. They play on slogans that they're kind of famous for or whatever it is like that. They are thinking about the pound signs. Their managers are thinking about the pound signs. They're waiting to get more followers, to get better brand deals. And that is literally it. They just want ambassadorships. They just want to be the next face of Boohoo Man or PLT. I can assure you, because I've been really candid with them and I've spoken to them about stuff like that. Mm. And they've told me how much they're getting paid. And it's seven figures. But yeah, seriously, I just think that's all they're thinking about the bottom line. But then what's the, what's wrong with that? They need to put food on the table, don't they? These poor starving, <laughs> but the, <laughs> poor, poor, poor I just people. don't think that the whole thing should exist, but you love it anyway. I think we're going to have to agree to disagree. Okay, well, you know, on that note, we're just going to end it here, I think. Sure. I'm not going to offend you anymore. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the first episode of Showbiz Unfiltered. You can watch us on all major podcast platforms and you can find us on TikTok, Instagram and YouTube. And if you're listening to this podcast, make sure you leave a five star rating and a very sumptuous review. And remember, champagne. Not Prosecco. Ciao for now.